It's the worst of the CBC for August 2nd, 2019, the show where I watch the CBC so you don't have to. If you're wondering what was on the docket for today's CBC, well, a lot of Canada-China relations. Um, there was a lot of coverage of Eric Gardner in the States, um, housing in Nunavut, um, Andrew Shear. It was a bit weird. It was on two separate half-hour loops. So I actually, again, ended up watching more than an hour of CBC for you. Metal later. So you're wondering, what was the worst story on the CBC today? The answer to that is, ultimately, when I narrowed it down, it was the coverage of the Canada-China relations and sort of Christian Freeland's accomplishments. It was about 10 minutes off the top. The lead story was, uh, China has allowed Canada to start talking to it again. What a, what a huge, huge, huge diplomatic success that turned out to be. Now, that is good, but... It is contrasted by the fact that China had basically been ignoring us for eight months straight. They wouldn't even talk to Canada. We didn't even have an ambassador appointed to China. Now, my frustration here is it spent about nine and a half minutes basically talking about, oh, what a great accomplishment this was for Christian Freeland. Then there was about a 25-second clip of Andrew Scheer criticizing, which was the only 25 seconds worthwhile in the entire thing, and then followed by 10 seconds of analyzing Andrew Scheer's uh, comments, which wasn't really done greatly, and then move on to the next story. So what did Andrew Shear say? So the only only thing of value in the entire segment was when Andrew Shear says, basically, forgive me for not plotting, applauding Christopher Freeland for finally being able to talk to uh, the Chinese because they still do not have an ambassador appointed to China after John McCallum was fired. When they say for comments, no, he was fired because he hosted a closed door event for the Chinese press in Canada that he didn't let the Canadian press go into. And then slam the Canadian position. Moving on. The other thing he says, they don't have an ambassador and they didn't, they haven't, we haven't even filed a complaint with the World Trade Organization for the beef, poultry, and um, canola uh, slaps that China's put on us. China has violated international agreements by basically haphazardly shutting down Canadian exports. And Canada's done nothing. Again, there's been no coverage of the Canada has done nothing. So, I was watching this whole thing and them cover Christopher Freeland, and it reminded me a lot of uh, the first time my brother scored a goal in soccer. So my little brother, when he was four years old, uh, we we got a, we have a family video of an interview of him after he scored his first goal. And the interview literally starts with, there's this kid, Stefan, who was the best kid on the team. He was like from Europe or something. And, he, and my brother goes, um, Stefan did a corner kick to me. I closed my eyes. The ball hit me, and it went in. Okay, that's how my brother scored his first goal. Now, funny in our family, but that's kind of what Christopher Freeland just did. This is the equivalent of Christopher Freeland closing her eyes and something hitting her. Like, this is, she didn't accomplish anything here, yet it's the equivalent of if my brother had scored that goal at the age of four, and then instead of my dad taking out a camera to talk to him for family posterity, all of ESPN descended on the soccer field. He was then put on highlight of the night, look at Daniel's little brother, stand there while the ball deflects off of him. And then we proceeded to see the social analyst from ESPN go, well, it's really unfair that Tom Brady makes over $20 million a year, whereas four-year-olds playing Canada soccer on a, in a field somewhere to, with pylons don't make enough money. Is this Islamophobia? Maybe. Right? That was the equivalent because Christian Freeland had the equivalent of, of, of a, a four-year-old soccer, a ball hitting her and, and, and going in the net. This is this is not an accomplishment. The real story is how was Christian Freeland so incompetent for ten for for eight whole months, and then all of a sudden the Chinese are now talking to us, right? So none of the actual important stuff on China was touched upon. If you want to know what the important stuff was, there's a video on this page, all on the breakdown of Trudeau's new scandal or on China. I go over all of that. Essentially, this is what the bias is. There's more than one type of fake news. You can just outright lie, or you can give you know nine minutes of one side followed by thirty seconds of another side. This was contrasted by when Andrew Scheer made an announcement. They cover this also in the CBC. Andrew Scheer basically announced that he would not reduce funding to, to health care. He would keep increasing uh, health care funding by 3% um, every year. So they talked about that, giving Andrew Scheer's comments about one minute, and then they gave about two minutes to each of his critics. They basically gave time to Bill Morneau to say how when Andrew Scheer, Scheer says he's going to increase funding, it really means he's going to cut funding. And yes, we all know Doug Ford, Doug Ford, Doug Ford, Doug Ford, Doug Ford. Right. And then we even had the NDP. The NDP basically said conservatives are bad. We all know conservatives are bad. And then they analyzed that. Right. More an analysis was given to the, you know, asinine NDP claim that conservatives are evil than was to Andrew Scheer's legitimate criticism of Christopher Freeland and Justin Trudeau's handling on China. So that is that is another type of fake news. 
Honorable mention for worst story of the day, um, although I don't think it was covered badly, it's Eric Gardner. Um, the cop was just, there was a story in the States. And this is sort of appeals to a lot of Canadians' frustrations with the CBC and Canadian news. We're covering sort of American social issues a lot more than we do here. So like this whole Black Lives Matter United States, a lot of America's social issues are actually trickling down into Canada because they're being forced upon us by the Canadian media. Like, for example, Black Lives Matter Toronto, the idiots who stopped the Pride Parade. One of their leaders is an open racist and a lunatic, and the other one embezzled hundreds of thousands of dollars out of her university, and we're just not allowed to talk to it. These are civil rights activists in Canada, and it's because of this nonsense that Canadians think that, that black people are just being shot willy-nilly down the streets when... The year that Black Lives Matter blocked the parade because trans women are being murdered willy-nilly, there were 22 police shootings across all of Canada, and most of them are justified, and very few of them, uh, the majority of them were white, not black. So that's that's another legitimate frustration that people have. What is the number one omission of today? Honorable mention to Jessica Yanov until they cover her, it, him, whatever. I'm going to say the Operation Kill Switch, we covered it last night, um... Islamic Relief Canada is going ahead with a lawsuit against Tom Quiggin, who is a court-certified expert in terrorism in Canada. So a court-certified expert in terrorism has alleged and provided evidence that the Canadian government, including Justin Trudeau, Ahmed Hussein, Christian Freeland, Marie Claude Bibo, Omar al Ghabra, Iqbal Khalid, have directed tens of millions of dollars of taxpayer money down a pathway that they know will lead into the hands of the terrorist group Hamas. This is a crime in Canada, and it is not being covered. So I'm, I'm saying that is the number one complaint or omission of today's CBC. All in all, today's CBC scores an 8 out of 10 on the Rosemary Barden scale of bias. 8 out of 10 Rosemary Bardens, which means it gives you a migraine if you watch it for long enough. So, you're welcome. I watched the CBC, so you don't have to. I will see you all tomorrow.